Researchers predict that we will exhaust all of the fresh text data on the internet in less than 30 years. That's right. That is why synthetic data is becoming the secret sauce of AI development. It's our escape hatch from the data apocalypse, and I am going to break it all down for you today in this video. So what exactly is synthetic data? Well, simply put, synthetic data is artificially generated information that mimics the real world patterns, but isn't collected from real world events. So think of it like this. Instead of going out and collecting thousands of customer service conversations to train your AI assistant, you could generate artificial conversations that look and feel just like the real thing. Synthetic data isn't fake data. It's designed to preserve the statistical properties and patterns that are found in real data. The key difference is that it's generated by algorithms rather than being collected from real world interactions. So for language models, specifically synthetic data could include artificially generated questions and answers, simulated conversations, synthetic instructions following examples, computer generated reasoning paths, and manufactured code examples. Now the beauty of synthetic data is that it can be generated at scale, customized to specific requirements, and designed to avoid privacy concerns. And the best part? According to some estimates, synthetic data can be generated for a fraction of the cost of collecting and annotating real data. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of how synthetic data actually works. There are four main approaches, and I will give you real examples for each one of these. First is model-based generation. Now, this is basically AI to make your training data for other AI. Meta is doing this right now with their latest models. For example, Claude 3 in Tropic used the older Claude 2 model to generate thousands of helpful customer service interactions. They would prompt it with something like, write a conversation where a customer asks about resetting their password and an AI assistant helps them step by step. Then the newer model learns from these synthetic examples. Another popular technique here is distillation, where a more advanced teacher model creates training examples for a smaller student model. Now, Microsoft actually used this approach with some of their smaller, faster models. Second is rule-based generation. Now, this is more old school, but still super effective. You create templates with placeholders and randomly fill them in to create those variations. For example, now Google might create a template like, how do I action my device when it does this problem? Then you have the list of reset and update and connections on devices could be your phones and laptops and tablets and then the problem could be freezing or won't turn on or is slow. And by mixing and matching these, they could generate thousands of tech support questions for training. Third is back translation. Now this is brilliant for multilingual models. You translate text to another language and then back creating a slight variation in the process. So for example, you could have a model use it for their multilingual model. So English sentences like the weather is beautiful today um, and you can translate them into French and then back to English with slight variation that the weather is magnificent today. Now these slight variations then create the new training examples while preserving that core meaning. The fourth is self-improvement methods. Now this is where it really gets wild. So models that can identify their own weaknesses and then generate data to improve themselves. Now, DeepMind's alpha geometry system generated 100 million synthetic geometry problems, trying to solve them and then using the successful solution to then teach itself better approaches. Now, it literally created its own training curriculum, starting with easier problems and then working up to Olympic level problems. Now, let me break down the five essential best practices for synthetic data. Number one is quality control. Extremely critical. You absolutely need to filter out garbage or your model will learn garbage. 
Now, number two is mixing synthetic and real data. This is such sort of like cooking where synthetic data is your spice and not the main ingredient so that you can use that for um, use multiple sources of data. Uh, for example, you could have customer service scenarios. They might use 70% real customer interactions and then 30% synthetic ones that specifically cover your edge cases or um, that's missing from your real data. Number three is ensuring diversity and representativeness. So your synthetic data needs to represent the full spectrum of situations of, that your model can face. Now, a math reasoning data set where you deliberately generate synthetic problems covering different mathematical concepts, difficulty levels, and solution approaches um, could be an example. You create the examples using diverse variations and context to ensure that the model doesn't associate math only with specific contexts. Number four is being transparent. Users need to know when they are dealing with synthetic training data systems. Now, Meta's Llama 3 documentation explicitly states which portions of its training involved synthetic data. They share details on how much was used and what techniques generated it. This transparency really helps researchers understand potential limitations as well. Number five is verifying factuality. This is huge for factual domains. Wrong synthetic data can create confidently wrong AI um, and extremely important to be, to be factual. Now let's get practical about when synthetic data makes sense and when it doesn't and what you need to watch out for. So when does it make sense or when does it shine? Number one is data scarcity situations, perfect for low resource languages or specialized domains. Um, the, the Lama team used synthetic data to bolster their training for languages like Swahili or Nepali where internet really has limited data on. Number two is privacy sensitive domains like healthcare is the poster child for this. Researchers at Stanford created synthetic patient records that maintain statistical patterns without exposing real patient data. And number three is balancing skewed data sets. When your real data has blind spots, you then use synthetic data to create more examples of rare but important error messages. And in anything that you're trying to build. Now, when to avoid synthetic data? Well, number one scenario would be the high stakes application without verification, legal, medical advice um, that needs extreme care. Always verify that re with the real world testing and human expertise. And number two would be when bias could amplify. So since synthetic data often inherits the biases from its creator models, it can create dangerous feedback loops. Number three for your evaluation set. So always test on, on real data. So there you have it, the complete lowdown on synthetic data for language models. If you're building AI systems, synthetic data isn't just uh, nice to have anymore, it's becoming essential. And as we approach that 2050 data cliff, it's only going to become more and more important. So I would love to know, have you used synthetic data in your projects? And if you have, I'd love to hear your experience. Drop them in the comments below. Smash that like and subscribe button to be aware of when I post new videos on cloud and AI. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.